this is part two on uh, terminal deception, finding the truth in a sea of disinformation, lies, and propaganda. Part three. As food costs rise, large U.S. food companies hide price increases by shrinking package sizes and quantities. Brand name household products ranging from ivory silk to toothpaste, orange juice to cereal, from crackers to Kraft cheese singles, have seen their packages downsized up to 20% over the past few years, according to Consumer Reports. While charging the same price as the old packages and quantities, is this hiding of inflationary price increases deception? It feels like it. Tropicana sells its half gallon orange juice, which should be 64 ounces, but only puts 59 ounces of juice in the containers. They are lying to and cheating their customers. Where's the FTC? haagen shorts its pints of ice cream by 13%. Kraft 2% milk singles quietly took two slices of cheese out of their packages. But like haagen Tropicana, and dozens of large food processors charges the same price for the lesser quantity. They are deceiving and cheating their customers, and our corrupt government colludes with them by maintaining the charade that there is no food price inflation, but thinking Americans, are there any left? No better. In reality, the cost of dairy, eggs, fruit, natural ingredients, and other fruit products have risen on an average of 20 to 25 percent over the past two years, while our government has told us food price inflation is minimal. Would they lie to us? Part 4. U.S. living standards are tanking. Question, why are so many Americans hurting today? Answer, in spite of the Wall Street, Fed, Washington touted great economic recovery, according to Pew Research, 29% of Americans say it is difficult to afford food. 43 million Americans are on food stamps. 51% say it's difficult to afford health care. But it's mandated now. 48% say it's difficult to afford home heating and electric bills. 57% say it's difficult to afford things they really want. These poll results were completely censored from the mainline media, which keeps repeating the government-fed Wall Street propaganda that we are in a strong, accelerating economic recovery. Do your own private poll. Talk to your friends, neighbors, associates around the country, and ask them what they are seeing or feeling. You are likely to hear stories of unemployment for several years, foreclosures, bankruptcies, no medical care, not enough food, or needing food stamps to survive. This writer is hearing new horror stories from around the country almost every day, and uh, he asked that you write to him and tell him yours. Part 5. From mid-2007 to the end of 2009, the U.S. private sector economy, i.e. the productive sec sector of the economy, plunged by $1.3 trillion dollars and hasn't come back, while the government economy soared by $1 trillion. So the government claims we have only seen a highly manageable $300 billion in economic contraction, i.e. a mild reception. recession. Not true. There is no recovery. We are in a huge, great depression. Part 6. American workers are being decimated with the worst wage declines in decades. Wages for American workers have fallen dramatically since the financial crisis in what will likely turn out to be the worst such plunge since the Great Depression, the Wall Street Journal reported recently reported. When hard times hit, employers typically are reluctant to reduce wages, but this downturn has been different. More than half the workers who found new work by early 2010 after losing jobs between 2007 and 2009 said their pay had dropped according to Labor Department data cited in the Wall Street Journal. A full 36% said the new job paid 20% less than their former one. While headlines have focused 
on the national unemployment rate of 9.4 percent, the pain extends far beyond those 14.5 million who are deemed officially unemployed by government statistics. The real number probably exceeds 25 million unemployed. The only other instance of such severe wage reductions since the Depression was during the recession of the early 1980s, but the current slump is on track to be far worse, the Wall Street Journal notes. Among people who are lucky enough to have work, living standards have been significantly downgraded. Almost a third of America's working families are now considered low income, earning less than twice the official poverty threshold, according to a recent report. The recession reversed a period of improvement. This trend spells a grim future for the American worker and for the American economy. We are witnessing the destruction of the U.S. middle class, Karl Marx's goal for America, even as Wall Street is amassing billions in new riches. Part 7. Quantitative easing is the new politically correct, highly deceptive Fed government term for debasing the dollar through massive inflating of the money supply, i.e. counterfeiting. The real number for quantitative easing over the past 40 months, months is $4 trillion. In 2011, the Fed will be purchasing 60% of the estimated $1.29 trillion deficit, which in the real world will be over $2 trillion. That's between $762 billion and $1.2 trillion in monetization of federal debt or money printing. This will collapse the U.S. dollar which is the strategy of the Fed and Treasury, though they strongly deny the same. Part 8. In spite of the recovery propaganda, the revenues of state governments fell 31% in 2009, from $1.6 trillion to $1.1 trillion, and fell more in 2010. 38 states and hundreds of municipalities, including Chicago, Detroit, Omaha, and other large cities, are in serious financial trouble, are slashing payrolls and services. Many are on the verge of bankruptcy and default on their municipal bonds and pension funds. Real world unfunded state pension liabilities are $5.2 trillion. They cannot tax their way out of their deficit and future liabilities. Bloomberg estimates that 100 to 150 municipalities will go broke over the next year or so. Editors note. If you still own any municipal bonds, sell 100% of them now. Does this sound like the great recovery touted by Obama, the Fed, Wall Street, and the financial media? Part 9. USA Today headlined in its Monday section in late December, Optimism for Home Sales adds up, saying the trend in housing is starting to move in the right direction and the worst of the housing meltdown is behind us. This bullish spin was in spite of the fact that housing sales in 2010 were 27.9 percent below 2009 levels. Homeowners lost over 9 trillion in home values since its peak in 2006 and lost 1.7 trillion in 2010 alone. This is worse than the 26 percent decline in the Great Depression from 1928 to 1933. Yes, the propaganda from USA Today left out the very left out the important fact that home sales were still 28 percent below the prior year's sales. U.S. home prices have fallen for the past 54 consecutive months. That's four and a half years, and continue to fall in at this writing. Is this really a real estate recovery? We don't think so. Real estate is not in recovery, as the government, media, and Wall Street claim. It is, a continue, it is continuing its decline as the housing crisis intensifies. Newly initiated residential foreclosures grew 